In my last history video, we went over the Slosher, a weapon that has pretty much always been good either because of great kit design, inherently strong attributes, very few changes, or certain strengths that beat out most of everything else in the game. Slosher has stayed in the same spot for pretty much all of Splatoon's lifespan, but it's also one of the only weapons that's like this. Due to the many changes that Splatoon has received over the years, the metagame is frequently shifting, which means that what sits at the top of the tier list is usually not there for long. Weapons will inevitably fall out of favor, but I don't think anything has fallen quite as hard as the Dynamo Roller. It used to be the most overpowered thing in all of Splatoon, but it now sits comfortably among some of the worst weapons in the entire game. What happened, and how did it suffer one of the most severe cases of falling off this game has ever seen? That's exactly the question this video aims to answer, as this is the history of the Dynamo Roller. First, in order for you to fully understand this weapon's history, we need to go over what the weapon actually is. Dynamo is one of the roller weapons, essentially just a giant paint roller that is characterized by their unique flick attack and the ability to roll the weapon on the ground, painting the area you roll over. There are five different roller variations, each with their own specs and strengths, but we'll only be going over the Dynamo in this video. Like I said, Dynamo is a roller, and its flick attack can deal anywhere from 40 to 180 damage, depending on your proximity or height compared to the opponent, as well as what part of the hitbox you hit the opponent with. Dynamo is a heavyweight weapon, making the user run and swim slower compared to most other weapons when holding it. It also attacks very slow, has one of the slowest kill times in the entire game, and it also has terrible ink consumption, using about 18% of its tank per flick. Dynamo tends to make up for its slowness and ink heavy nature by having an attack with a massive radius, painting a lot of area, and being able to one-shot. These traits lead to Dynamo being called the most extreme of the rollers, and one of the most extreme weapons in the game, seeing as almost everything about this weapon is either really strong or really weak, with pretty much nowhere in between. Like most rollers, Dynamo has a large yet somewhat finicky flick hitbox. This isn't to say that the hitbox is bad by any means, in fact it outputs some of the most pressure in the entire game due to how massive it is, but its damage is not nearly as consistent as its pressuring area. Dynamo doesn't always one-shot, same with all the other rollers, but Dynamo suffers the most from this due to its high damage fall-off rate. The damage it deals goes below 100 faster than any other roller in the game in order to balance how insanely large the attack is, which makes plenty of sense. Luckily, the lowest amount of damage the Dynamo can actually do is 40, which is great because anything above 35 is one of the best damage values in the entire game, being able to combo well with almost anything. There is one pretty unusual weakness that hurts Dynamo a lot more than people realize though, and that is the fact that it does not paint its feet. Dynamo's inability to paint its feet consistently actually hurts the weapon's overall viability in the coordinated team setting a lot, and basically means that without teammates that provide consistent paint output, Dynamo is significantly weaker and is often unable to move. This is exactly why you almost never see a Dynamo and a Blaster on the same team, of course with a few exceptions, as the paint output is just too weak for either weapon to succeed. Dynamo, being as slow as it is, already struggles in the Splatoon landscape. Most really slow weapons have either incredible range, great paint, consistent damage, or other options to help it move, and Dynamo has exactly none of those. In a game like Splatoon, which is heavily based on your movement, Dynamo has a really hard time dealing with the more agile weapons in the game, or things with large, fast-acting hitboxes that it struggles to deal with. This makes Dynamo as a weapon very weak to bombs, and I mean very, very weak. It pretty much can't do anything if the other team decides to just throw bombs at it, which becomes much more apparent later in this video. I think Dynamo is overall just a really interesting weapon, and it honestly deserves more love, despite its glaring weaknesses. While I didn't cover everything about the weapon, most of what you need to know has been said, and more will be explained later in the video. With that, let's talk about the Dynamo Roller in the very first game, Splatoon. You may be wondering why the gameplay in the background isn't of Splatoon's multiplayer, but actually of their story mode. Well, Dynamo has a pretty unorthodox method of unlocking, being defeated the final boss of Splatoon's hero mode, DJ Octavio, and collecting the level Sunken Sea Scroll, a hidden collectible found in a crate. Giving the scroll to Sheldon unlocks all three Dynamo kits for purchase at his shop. This makes Dynamo one of the very few weapons to be unlocked through the story mode, and Splatoon 1 is the only game in the series that uses story mode unlocks for multiplayer weapons that aren't just reskins of the weapon's normal variant. Now that the Dynamo has been unlocked after a few hours of playing the story mode, let's talk about the weapon in the multiplayer setting. On launch, rollers were absolutely broken, especially Dynamo. If you didn't know, the rollers today need to hit in the middle of the hitbox to do the most damage, and often kill. This makes rollers a lot more fair and balanced, and it makes it so that good aim is rewarded with high damage. Well, what if that wasn't a thing, and rollers did the exact same amount of damage with any part of their hitbox? That's exactly what they were like for almost a year, and because Dynamo had the biggest hitbox and the most range, it was incredibly strong. 
It also helps that Dynamo could run damage up on its gear in order to kill much more often, making its already insane effective one-shot radius even larger. Dynamo's vanilla kit comes with Sprinkler and Echo Locator, a very strong kit on this weapon to say the least. Believe it or not, Sprinkler actually used to be good at painting, because in Splatoon 1, Sprinkler did not have its different painting modes that make it worse over time, and everything painted a lot less in general, making Sprinkler considerably stronger than it was today. Echo Locator is great on this weapon, as it allows for an instant ink refill as soon as you activate the special, as well as instantly locating the entire enemy team on click. Despite how unorthodox this kit is, it's actually the best one for Dynamo in the original Splatoon. This kit was so good, in fact, that it was the sole reason Echo Locator was globally nerfed from 180p to 200p, and on top of that, this Dynamo was given heavy special depletion when the mechanic was introduced, meaning it lost 75% of its special gauge on death. Dynamo is a very strong weapon, and this kit helped it solve some of its biggest problems, being paint output and ink efficiency. Although this probably wasn't the idea Nintendo had in mind, this kit focused on negating the weaknesses of the main weapon and making the main weapon considerably stronger, rather than focusing on usage of all three parts of the kit. And because Dynamo was already a very strong main weapon, this kit that makes it even better is pretty obviously the best of the three. There are still some weaknesses of this kit though. Sprinkler pretty much never kills, with its main purpose being paint. This means that the V Dynamo's only real kill option is the roller itself, considering that the special Echo Locator doesn't deal any damage. Also, sub weapons in Splatoon 1 were very expensive compared to what they are now, which is why the later Splatoon games see a lot more bomb usage. Today, in Splatoon 3, the sub weapon that takes up the most of your ink tank upon use is Squid Beacon, with 75%. Sprinkler in Splatoon 1 used to take 80% of your tank to use, more than both Splat Bomb and Suction Bomb, which both set at 70, and Disruptor, which was the best sub weapon in the game, taking 50. We will see Sprinkler on Dynamo a lot more in the future, but because of its 80% ink consumption combined with Dynamo's 20% ink consumption per flick, Sprinkler would see a lot less use in this game. Still, the main weapon being the only kill option isn't exactly a terrible thing for Dynamo, as it was still a very strong fighter without a sub or special, and the main weapon was insanely overtuned. Next, Nintendo decided they wanted to try giving one of the best weapons in the game that did not have a lethal sub weapon a lethal sub weapon. This is the Gold Dynamo with Splat Bomb and Ink Strike. This is the first time Dynamo would see a lethal bomb on its kit, and it would definitely be a point of contention among Dynamo players at the time. This kit seemed to focus a lot more on zoning pressure and getting value out of its special, rather than heightening the strengths of the main weapon, leading to a pretty different playstyle than before. Bombs would be used as another way to kill, as well as giving Dynamo a tool to push people out of areas, and Splat Bomb most especially can be used as a get off me tool, which means forcing an opponent away from you, but also as a way to push people out of a certain spot so you can hit them easier with the main weapon. Ink Strike fills a very similar role to Splat Bomb in that it forces people to move, but this time with a much more drawn out effect, leading to possibly better zoning and easier time positioning for Dynamo. While V Dynamo's Echo Locator allowed it to play a lot more aggressive, Gold's Ink Strike encouraged a much more supportive playstyle. In theory, Gold should be a really strong aggressive weapon with its Splat Bomb, but without the instant ink refill capabilities of Echo Locator and Ink Strike making you unable to move while using it, frontlining with this weapon is a whole lot more risky. Instead, Gold Dynamo likes to play paint support for its team, throwing in sub saver boosted splat bombs to help with damage, and passively charging its ink strike in order to retake space for its team when needed. While not being as good as the vanilla Dynamo, the support capabilities of Gold was pretty much unmatched in Splatoon 1, making it very good at what it does. It didn't see nearly as much use as the other Dynamo rollers as its potential wasn't fully explored, especially in high level play, but when making a team with Gold Dynamo in mind, it can be very, very strong. Lastly, we have the Tempered Dynamo Roller, which, in my opinion, is one of the best-looking weapons in all of Splatoon. Tempered comes with Seeker and Killer Whale, making it sort of a hybrid between the vanilla and gold Dynamo Rollers. Seeker paints a path behind it as it travels, and because you're usually swimming behind it while recharging your ink, the sub-weapon's 80% ink usage usually doesn't matter. This means that the Tempered saw the most sub-weapon use of the three Dynamos, but it still didn't necessarily rely on it. The weapon also had Killer Whale, which has a considerably stronger displacement ability than Ink Strike at the cost of not painting at all. The good thing about Killer Whale though is that it's a 160p special, the lowest points for special in the entire game, and combining that with only medium depletion on Tempered allows for what was pretty much the best Killer Whale output in the entire game. Like I said before, Tempered could be seen as a hybrid between the first two dynamos. Its Seeker greatly helped its mobility, allowing it to play more aggressive, but using the Killer Whale makes you very vulnerable for a decent amount of time meaning you have to get out of the front lines and in a safe position in order to use it. This means that Tempered is able to adopt a more flexible playstyle than the other two kits, and while Gold could theoretically do this as well, Tempered Seeker allows it to get in and out of situations much more effectively than Splat Bomb does. Some consider this kit pretty awkward and hard to fit on teams, which is one of the main reasons that it saw less use overall, 
but it can be pretty strong in the right situations, given a team that can capitalize off of its killer whale output. Dynamo Roller at this point is very strong, but as we know, it doesn't stay that way forever. The Dynamos received a lot of nerfs this game. In fact, most balance patches that were released in the later half of the game's lifespan were either focused on changing mechanics to make Dynamo less overpowered, or directly nerfing the weapon itself. Sure, the patches weren't entirely focused on Dynamo, but since it was so much better than most other weapons in the game, it makes sense that Nintendo would address it almost every chance they got. Patch 2.0.0 would bring the first big change to Dynamo, making Echolocator 200p. This hurt V-Dynamo's special output a little bit, but overall it didn't change much for the weapon. By the way, if you didn't already know, Splatoon 1's points for special values were assigned to each special rather than each weapon, meaning that every weapon that had Echo Locator went from 180p to 200p thanks to Dynamo Roller. Patch 2.2.0 would bring the most impactful changes to the Dynamo Roller and some of the most impactful changes that Splatoon has ever seen. The ability of the rollers to do the same amount of damage anywhere on the hitbox would be changed to how it is today with damage being higher the closer the enemy is to the middle of the hitbox. Also, rollers can no longer one-shot without ink, making them actually function like Splatoon weapons now. These changes were very fair and understandable, but were possibly the biggest nerfs Dynamo has ever gotten, and maybe even among the most impactful changes in all of Splatoon. Just to show how crazy the hitbox change is, this is essentially what Dynamo's effective damage radius looks like today, and this is what it looked like before the patch. Patch 2.7.0 would introduce Special Depletion, the mechanic I mentioned earlier, which assigned a specific percentage loss of your Special Gauge upon death to every weapon in the game. Special Depletion would only exist in Splatoon 1, however, as Splatoon 2's Special Reworks would completely drop Special Depletion as a whole. The Heavyweight Weapon classification was also introduced, making weapons like Dynamo, E-Leader, and Hydra effectively 10% slower. Dynamo's already poor mobility was hurt even more by this change, meaning it had to play around its teammates much more than before. Patch 2.8.0 would heavily nerf Stealth Jump, possibly the most broken ability in the game at the time, which in turn nerfed Dynamo. Stealth Jump in Splatoon 1 completely hides your Super Jump marker, whereas in future Splatoon games, it becomes more visible the closer you get to it. Dynamo is able to flick midair while super jumping, and would land at the same time the flick comes out, so it can send out its hitbox completely stealthily and with zero punishment. This change made it so that you can't attack before landing while wearing Stealth Jump, meaning an entire gear ability was directly nerfed because of Dynamo, as no other weapon benefited from pre-firing your jump quite like Dynamo did. And finally, Patch 2.9.0 would add even more negative changes to Dynamo, decreasing the size of its kill hitbox by a whopping 18%, and further increasing the Dynamo Roller Flick's widening frames, which is the period of time that you can't recover ink in after performing an action, to 1.33 seconds, making it have one of the longest widening frame times in the entire game. All of these changes would hurt the weapon drastically, but in reality it was still very strong in this game. It didn't have many counters, it could deal with most specials pretty well, and the maps people played on were, for the most part, pretty good for Dynamo. On top of that, Dynamo Roller was the first weapon people ran quick respawn stealth jump builds with, and it was one of the only weapons in the game at the time that ran that sort of gear effectively. While Dynamo was initially considered to be the main QR stealth weapon, the Japanese team Almost Kids would change that forever. This team single-handedly defined the late Splatoon 1 meta by running QR stealth builds on not just Dynamo, but unconventional weapons like T-Tech and 52, completely flipping the idea most people had of the game on its head. They would use QR stealth strats in most games they played, but when they eventually took down Chimera in tournament using QR strats, Chimera was considered to be the best team in the West at the time, by the way, the larger Splatoon 1 player base would be quick to realize just how broken QR stealth strats really are. From here on out, Splatoon 1 was essentially defined by QR stealth. Weapons would be considered good based on how well they work with these builds, and if they didn't work, they would need an insanely powerful kit to make up for it. This is why Custom Range Blaster is considered by many to be the best weapon in the entire game, as not only does QR Stealth fit the weapon really well, but its kit is also really strong. This is also why Zinc Mini Splatling tops a lot of people's tier lists, as its kit is unimaginably strong, meaning that if it didn't work too well with QR Stealth, the kit still greatly makes up for it. That should be it for the Dynamo Roller in Splatoon 1. While Vanilla continued to be the best of the three, the Gold and Tempered Dynamos would actually see a decent amount of use, despite the fact that they didn't work too well with the quick respawn stealth jump builds that define the game. Still, if you look at high level Splatoon 1, you can see there isn't too much variation in terms of what weapons are used, and 9 times out of 10, Dynamo players would pick Vanilla Dynamo. 
Even if a team wanted to build their comps around gold or tempered, vanilla was just better on like 85% of map mode combinations in the game. And on top of that, vanilla dynamo was extremely easy to run on your teams, as not much thought really had to go into building a team around it. So even on those very few favorable maps for gold or tempered, people would usually just stick to vanilla, which just shows how good echolocator really is on dynamo. Not to say that the other two kits are bad by any means, but their usage cases were significantly smaller than Vanilla's, making it the dominant weapon in a Dynamo Master's weapon pool. Now, let's talk about Dynamo Roller in Splatoon 2. Splatoon 2 pretty much feels like a whole new game compared to Splatoon 1. Many things were reworked, rebalanced, redesigned, or even outright removed in the transition from the first game to the second. The Roller class had one of the biggest changes out of anything though, and that is the Vertical Swing. The Vertical Sling is a new form of the flick attack given to all roller weapons. When performing a flick after pressing the jump button, you swing the roller in a vertical fashion, which allowed for completely consistent pain in a narrow line as well as more range, but at the steep cost of the vertical flick taking longer to come out. It's also worth mentioning that it actually paints your feet unlike the horizontal swing, but that's only to counteract how slow the attack is. On paper, the vertical swing sounds great. Giving Dynamo an alternate attack to help it deal with certain situations better is a great idea design-wise, but if you ask any experienced Dynamo players, most, if not all of them, will probably say something along the lines of, don't vertical swing. Why do people say this? The other rollers all love their vertical swing, so why does Dynamo hate it? Well, the answer lies in its method of activation. Dynamo uses its jump a lot due to its poor grounded mobility, and being able to jump helps it move a lot easier as well as get more distance out of attacks. You activate the vertical swing through jumping, and since the vertical swing is one of the slowest attacks, if not the slowest attack in the entire game, you can often get punished as dynamo for just jumping. This is the same for most blaster weapons, but specifically range blaster, as the ridiculous shot deviation you get from jumping and shooting can make the difference between hitting a direct and one-shotting, or hitting an indirect and dying because RNG decided you wouldn't hit your shot today. It's the same thing for dynamo, but much more punishable. I'm not entirely sure on this, so I might be wrong, but I think the Dynamo Vertical Flick is in the top 3 slowest kill times in all of Splatoon, meaning almost any weapon in the entire game can kill the Dynamo user before the Vertical Flick hitbox even comes out. Of course, there are still methods of activating the horizontal swing mid-air, but you can no longer always do that like you could in Splatoon 1, severely worsening Dynamo's movement abilities. Also, Splatoon 2 would see a complete special weapon overhaul, with most specials being replaced by their redesigned counterparts, for better or for worse. Dynamo didn't have much trouble dealing with the previous game's special weapons, as none of them really hard countered it. You can make an argument for Kraken or Bubbler being super strong against it, but in reality, those specials were good against everything, so it doesn't really mean anything. In Splatoon 2, Dynamo loses encounters with almost every, if not every, special in the entire game. I won't go too in-depth as to why this is the case, as for the most part it's pretty obvious, but I will go over a few of the worst ones for Dynamo. Ink Armor's damage cap means Dynamo can no longer always have the ability to one-shot, as the one-hit damage against Ink Armored players has a hard cap of 80. Stingray, unlike its Splatoon 1 counterpart, is controlled by the player instead of being deployed, meaning you can manually track the Dynamo player down. And since Dynamo has a lot of trouble escaping Stingray, it's usually a free kill, or at least a lot of damage dealt to the Dynamo player. Remember when I said Dynamo has a lot of trouble with bombs? Well, they brought Bomb Rushes back, but this time, Nintendo buffed Bomb Rush into Bomb Launcher, which Dynamo has even more trouble dealing with than before. Last but not least, the infamous Bubble Blower, and, well, what can you really do against this? Those aren't the only specials Dynamo has an issue with, as you can reasonably make a case for all 15 of them except Splashdown, but those are definitely the worst for Dynamo. The Dynamo would receive a few small buffs going into this game, but none of that really mattered at all because it was given the vertical flick, and on top of that, the horizontal flick's max range was nerfed by 8% for whatever reason. From here on out though, Dynamo would never receive another nerf, ever. It just kept getting buffs, even to this day, meaning technically, Dynamo as a main weapon, not including external factors like kits, abilities, or map pool, was the worst it has ever been at the very start of Splatoon 2. It only goes up from here, right? Well, no. Splatoon 2's vanilla Dynamo would receive the kit of Ink Mine and Stingray, and if you know anything about early Splatoon 2, this kit is both really, really good and also really, really bad. Ink Mines on paper sound pretty good for Dynamo Roller, as they only take 60% of your tank to use and can help wear down an opponent to give you an easier kill. Well, first of all, this requires a lot of thinking ahead and an unnecessary amount of effort to go through for just a few mines. But on top of that, ink mines used to be just absolute garbage no matter what weapon they were on. Until patch 3.0.0 of Splatoon 2, ink mines would be the only sub weapon that does not allow you to substrafe, one of the most important movement mechanics in all of Splatoon. While holding R and popping out of ink to change direction while swimming, you can change direction a lot faster than you would otherwise be able to. 
Mines used to not let you do this, putting you at a massive disadvantage compared to every other weapon with a different sub in the entire game. Dynamo Roller, which already has a tough time moving, plus worse movement options due to the sub weapon, equals an overall bad weapon. The mines aren't the only part of this kit though, as V Dynamo also has Stingray, which contrary to popular belief, is actually pretty good on this weapon. Stingray at the time people considered Dynamo for usage at the highest level of play was very, very overtuned, and just like how Tempered Dynamo got its Killer Whale faster than any other weapon in Splatoon 1, V Dynamo gets its Stingray faster than any other weapon, which means something, I guess. V Dynamo essentially becomes a Stingray bot with its kit, but it's not even too good at being a Stingray bot. Because this isn't Splatoon 1 anymore, its ability to deal with most of the weapons and specials in the game is a whole lot worse, making V Dynamo at its absolute strongest when it just farms Stingray all game. But why farm Ray with a slow and incongruent weapon that has a really hard time even existing, when you could just farm it with Custom Jet Squelcher, a shooter class weapon with insane painting range and even a burst bomb? Well, before Jet Squelcher was introduced, Dynamo had to have been the best weapon with Ray, right? No. Sloshing Machine with Autobomb and Stingray blew this thing out of the water and was undoubtedly the best weapon in the game after Tri Slosher was nerfed into the ground and while Ray was still overpowered. On top of that, Sloshing Machine is one of the best weapons around its range value at fighting Dynamo, and Stingray, being one of the best specials at fighting Dynamo, made Machine's kit completely invalidate the usage of the Vanilla Dynamo roller in multiple ways. Overall, Vanilla Dynamo gets outclassed pretty hard. If you theoretically wanted the most Stingray you could possibly get, you could run V Dynamo, but it's just not worth doing when you could run other weapons that can do more than just charge Stingray all game. Next, we have Gold Dynamo Roller with Splat Bomb and Ink Armor. This kit is significantly better than the V Dynamo for a multitude of reasons. Splat Bomb's overall utility has increased a lot going into Splatoon 2, as there's much more of a need for chip damage and object damage. Splat Bomb is strong for all the reasons I previously mentioned, but its utility for Dynamo would be seen greatly in the roller's matchup with Ink Armor. As I said earlier, Ink Armor hard caps one hit damage to 80, which is terrible for a slow attacking weapon like Dynamo. Now that it has a Splat Bomb, Dynamo can deal with Ink Armor users much easier by throwing a bomb at them first and then attacking with the roller, which is significantly faster than just swinging twice. Giving Dynamo easier means of winning one-on-one -on -one matchups is amazing for it, and this kit does exactly that. It doesn't just do that with the Splat Bomb though, as Gold Dynamo also comes with its own Ink Armor, which is great for the weapon. It refills your Ink Tank instantly just like Echo Locator does, and we all know how good Echo is on Dynamo by now. On top of refilling your tank, you also get Ink Armor, of course, enabling Dynamo to go further in and live even longer, as well as give its team the ability to do the same thing. The main downside of Ink Armor as opposed to Echo Locator on Dynamo though, is that while you can use Echo Locator whenever you want, Using Ink Armor cancels the Dynamo's flick attack, meaning you can't use it as an instant ink refill whenever you want with no downside. It's usually fine though, as using Ink Armor obviously gives you Ink Armor, so the trade-off is more than worth it for you and your team. Unlike Gold Dynamo from Splatoon 1, this version of the kit is a lot more flexible. This time, Gold doesn't have a special that hurts its movement abilities, so it's able to play a lot more aggressive with its Splat Bomb, but it can also play more passive thanks to its 190p Ink Armor that it can get very fast. Because Dynamo has certain strengths over other armor support weapons, there are some cases where teams will even prefer gold as their armor support option. Whether it be because of the map, of the player using the weapon, or the comp surrounding it, gold Dynamo saw a decent amount of use for its armor. Despite the main weapon itself being pretty trash at this point, its really good kit was what enabled it to be used at higher levels of play, and while it wasn't common by any means, it definitely did see use, bringing the Dynamo Roller back into the conversation when it comes to competitive play. Last, but definitely not least, we have the Kenza Dynamo Roller, the crowd favorite of the three Dynamo kits, and for good reason. The weapon comes with Sprinkler and Booyah Bomb, which is about as close as we'll ever get to the perfect Dynamo kit, considered by most to be Burst Bomb and Booyah Bomb. I want to quickly make a case for Sprinkler, as contrary to the idea most people have of the sub-weapon, on something like Dynamo, Sprinkler has a lot of merit. Now that Sprinkler is actually usable and no longer takes up 80% of your ink tank when used, like it did in Splatoon 1, its burst painting utility can be shown off to its fullest extent. When Sprinkler lands on a paintable surface, it paints a small radius around it instantly, much like a burst bomb. This allows Dynamo to move more and faster, as it no longer has to rely on its incredibly slow attacks to paint for it 100% of the time. Sprinkler allows Dynamo to paint walls much quicker, cover crucial distance easier, and even get further in with its attacks than before, giving the sub-weapon a surprising amount of value. The special, Booyah Bomb, wonderfully complements the rest of the kit in multiple ways. Booyah Bomb gives you almost 500 points of armor on command, allowing for Dynamo to go in a lot further without risk of dying. 
and when you're pushing further in, you can use your Booyah Bomb to even further extend this push, keeping your advantage state. The enhanced movement abilities of the weapon, thanks to Sprinkler, combined with strong aggressive power and survivability from Booyah Bomb, leads to a very, very strong kit on the Kenza Dynamo, which is the main reason it saw use. On top of just having a good kit in general, K-Dynamo's Booyah Bomb is 180p, lower than every other Booyah Bomb weapon, meaning it can pretty much always get Booyah Bomb whenever needed, allowing for it to be significantly more aggressive than most of the other Dynamo rollers we've previously seen. There's still some debate whether Gold or Kenza Dynamo is the better weapon, but in reality they're pretty similar. Gold tends to work better as a support weapon, while Kenza tends to work better aggressively, but really both weapons can play both playstyles, and while Gold has a really strong kit in general, Kensa has an even stronger kit for Dynamo specifically, making it ultimately come down to preference and which one is more useful on your team and for your win condition. I kinda love how Dynamo's kits were done in Splatoon 2. Having two kits that are somewhat interchangeable and play similar roles, while still being very different and one kit that is very different from both of them in both roles and kit, is honestly really cool to see, and all of these kits being useful is great for the game's overall variety as well as keeping the game more fun for Dynamo players. You may have noticed I neglected to talk about the buffs given to Dynamo this game, and that's mainly because they didn't help the weapon much. I'll put them all on screen right now if you want to pause the video and read them for yourself, but in reality, despite all these buffs, the weapon did not get much better. Most of these buffs are really good, but if you think about it, the only things that were buffed are parts of Dynamo's strengths, not its weaknesses. There was only one buff that directly helps it deal with specials better, one buff that helps its ink consumption, and only one buff that helps its mobility and this mobility buff is only relating to the Rainmaker, so it means nothing outside of that mode. Those are some of the weakest parts of Dynamo, and those parts were barely addressed at all, meaning it only got better at the things it was already good at. The way Nintendo went about buffing the weapon in Splatoon 2 was honestly a pretty bad way of doing it, but I don't really blame them. In reality, the staple extreme weaknesses of Dynamo are what give it its character and individuality. It's the perfect example of the slow, heavy-hitting character archetype, and changing this could be bad for the weapon's design. It's meant to attack slow and consume a lot of ink in order to do big damage with a big radius. So what does Dynamo really become as a weapon if it suddenly doesn't consume a lot of ink? What about if it attacks faster? This is probably the dilemma Nintendo faces when buffing Dynamo, as they want it to keep its character. Unfortunately, a weapon with this sort of design struggles a lot when put in the landscape of Splatoon 2, which is dominated by shooters, weapons with high paint and special outputs, jet squelcher, and specials that take advantage of slow-moving targets very easily. In a game so heavily based on mobility and specials, the slowness and ink consumption of Dynamo weighs it down super hard. Remember how I said making Dynamo more ink efficient would sort of make it lose its character? Well, this is update 4.7.0. It might seem pretty random just to throw this into the video as just some patch that changed a few things in the game, but to those of you who know what happened in this update, it probably gives you some war flashbacks, no matter what weapon you play. Two buffs that greatly impacted the game dropped in this update, those being a buff to Suction Bomb and, most importantly, Last Ditch Effort. If you don't know what LDE does, it's essentially a main exclusive gear ability that gives you a lot of Ink Saber Main, Ink Saber Sub, and Ink Recovery up, but only in the last 30 seconds of the game. This used to be considered pretty trash outside of Turf War, but in 4.7.0, everything changed. When your team's point counter goes below 50, LDE becomes increasingly stronger until your team's counter reaches 30 at which the effects max out at 24 AP each. This essentially means that when your team's counter gets low, for the price of one main ability on your headgear, just one, you can get all of this. This immediately bumped LDE from the bottom of tier list straight to the top, and it also helped Dynamo a lot. All of this extra ink efficiency is great for the weapon. Well, on paper. Remember, every weapon in the game has access to LDE, not just Dynamo, and LDE gives a lot of sub saver. You know what Dynamo is really weak to? That's right, bombs. After 4.7.0, bombs were used so much more due to how easy you could spam them with LDE. And on top of this, Suction Bomb received a damage buff from 180 to 220, which made it the second best bomb in the entire game, right behind Fizzy Bomb. Now, Suction Bombs and Fizzy Bombs could be spammed easier than ever, and the immense pressure of those two subs is just too much for Dynamo to handle. At this point, many Dynamo players don't even consider running LDE on their gear to be worth it, as you can generally benefit a lot more from a main of Special Charge or Swim Speed to help you deal with the other player's LDE better. That should be it for Splatoon 2's iteration of the Dynamo Roller. The introduction of the Vertical Flick overall didn't help Dynamo much, the design changes going into this game, especially when talking about the specials, hurt it drastically, and despite all its buffs and great kits, it still sits at very average spots on tier lists. 
LDE getting its massive buff would just send the weapon further down the hole of unviability, but Dynamo, in terms of viability, is still sort of clinging to the edge of a cliff at this point. It has its uses and can be really powerful when given a team built around it, but without that support from its teammates, it tends to struggle a lot. Maybe something would change with Splatoon 3, the current iteration of the Splatoon series. Upon release of Splatoon 3, Dynamo players were very excited to use their weapon in a new game. The most appealing thing for the Dynamo fans would be the new movement option, specifically the squid roll. This new ability to move was amazing for Dynamo as it allowed for more complex movement, easier spacing, and even another way to deal with bombs, one of the weapon's biggest weaknesses. The removal of lots of the Splatoon 2 specials was also great for Dynamo Roller as it's terribly weak to most of them. Despite all of these changes though, Dynamo continues to be aggressively mid, and its kit doesn't help it much at all. LDE was never nerfed after its insane over-the-top buff, meaning bomb spam is still as strong as ever, some weapons were given god-tier kits that absolutely dominate the Dynamo matchup, and the maps continue to get worse and worse for Dynamo as we go. Luckily, Stingray, Bubble Blower, the Bomb Launchers, and Ink Armor are all gone, Tena Missiles is far less common than before, and Ink Jet is on less good weapons, so Dynamo has an overall better time dealing with Splatoon 3's special cast. So far, we've only seen one Dynamo kit in Splatoon 3, being Vanilla Dynamo, which comes with Sprinkler and Tacticooler. We know Sprinkler is being pretty good on Dynamo already, and it hasn't changed at all, so everything I said before still stands. Tacticooler, on the other hand, is extremely mediocre, and is precisely what brings this weapon down. Tacticooler is a deployable special that gives you strong effects of all these abilities when you drink the soda, but despite how good this seems, it's honestly pretty bad. The main thing that made Sprinkler great for Kenza Dynamo was the more efficient movement it allowed the weapon to have. Combining this with Booyah Bomb, which allows you to be even more aggressive with Booyah Armor, makes for a pretty strong aggressive weapon. All Tacticooler really does is make you move a little faster, and just this alone is not enough for Dynamo to really capitalize off its enhanced movement thanks to Sprinkler. You could use Tacticooler as an instant ink refill, making this kit very similar to Splatoon 1's V-Dynamo, but as I mentioned earlier with Ink Armor, using your special will cancel the flick attack so you can't be nearly as efficient with Tacticooler in this regard as you could with Echo. What makes this even worse is that the Tacticooler effect often isn't worth cancelling your Dynamo flick for, whereas getting Ink Armor definitely was. In the current state of the game, V-Dynamo has pretty much no chance of succeeding at a high level of play. To get a good look why this might be, we need to look at high level matches first. A tournament that's still going on as this video releases is the Ink TV Resurgence League. Teams have to play in qualifiers first before they can make it to the actual bracket, and a YouTuber and Ink TV tournament competitor named Toyo Ben put together a spreadsheet of weapon usage data in the qualifier rounds to try to get a good idea of what this Splatoon 3 metagame looks like at a top level right now. The absolute most used weapon in all of qualifiers, by a significant margin too, was the sloshing machine. Remember earlier when I was talking about how good Machine was against V Dynamo in Splatoon 2? Well, Sloshing Machine is back to ruin the hopes of Dynamo players with its absurd kit of Fizzy Bomb and Booyah Bomb. Despite two special gauge nerfs and a pretty hefty ink consumption nerf, this thing stays at the top of the game, and this entire kit just beats Dynamo. Well, that's just one weapon. Surely it's not too bad, right? Wrong. Both Splashes beat Dynamo, both Splatanas beat Dynamo, Ballpoint beats Dynamo with ease, 96 Deco beats Dynamo, and many more. Even Range Blaster has a good matchup against Dynamo Roller, and you know your weapon is bad when range is considered to be good against it. So far, that's all we have for Dynamo in Splatoon 3. The game hasn't been out for long, we only have one kit, and the weapon sucks, so there's not really that much to talk about. There is one more thing I would like to do before we close out this video though, and that's to talk about how Dynamo Roller could become good again. It's about time Dynamo Roller gets some of those well-deserved buffs to the parts of the weapon that are really bad. I don't want to change it or give it buffs that are way more than it needs, because as I mentioned earlier, buffing the weaknesses of Dynamo could make it lose its character and uniqueness, so I want to propose a few ideas to buff the weapon the right way. Firstly, I want to propose a change for every roller, being that you can cancel the flick attack by going into squid form or pressing R to bring out your sub weapon. This on its own would be pretty overpowered, so the way that I would do it would be to make it so you can only cancel the flick attack within the first fourth of the time it takes you to perform the flick. Dynamo takes about one second to perform its vertical flick, so you would be able to cancel the attack within a quarter of a second after starting it. You're locked into the attack after that period of time, making it so that Dynamo players only have to commit to the attack if they want to, but also making sure you still commit to the attack if you don't hit the cancelling window, as to not make it too overpowered. Plus, you can already cancel Dynamo flicks by using your special weapon, so I think it makes some sense to have this feature in the game. 
This would make Dynamo as a weapon a whole lot less committal and would make accidental vertical flicks a lot less punishable. Next, I would change Dynamo's ink consumption from 18% per flick to 17%. After 5 consecutive flicks with no ink saver main, this leaves you with 15% of your ink tank, which is considerably more freedom than the 10% of your ink tank you'd have left with the current ink consumption. This would also make the effect of running one sub of ink saver main, which is the most practical way to run ink saver main on dynamo, more worthwhile, as now you get 6 flicks out of one tank with a little bit extra ink to roll around with than before. Using one sub of ink saver main currently gives you 6 flicks out of your tank with pretty much no spare ink, so you immediately have to go back into squid form. Lastly, as Splatoon as a game gets faster, we need to accommodate for Dynamo's slowness in order to make it fit a little better. I don't want to buff it too much, but I think the horizontal flick could be around 2-3% faster than it is currently. I would keep the vertical flick's current speed, as it's not really used in a close range interaction, whereas the horizontal flick is. It makes more sense to me to buff the horizontal flick a little bit, because that's the one the weapon really uses. While these changes would be great for the weapon, I don't think they'd be too good and would still fall in line with Dynamo's current design philosophy, which is most important to me as a Dynamo and Splatoon player. I would rather have a Dynamo roller that sucks and is still unique as a weapon, than one that is good but no longer sticks out as much from the rest of the rollers. Anyways, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the third installment of this weapon history series, and if you want to check out the other two I've made, they'll be linked in a YouTube playlist alongside this video, which will be linked in the description. Also, all of the music as well as the creators whose footage I used in this video will be listed in the description as well. These videos are super fun to make, and it feels really good being able to put these out for you guys. This channel is sort of a passion project of mine, and all the support you guys have given recently makes me so happy to be able to do this. Well, thank you for watching, thank you for 1.5k subscribers, and I'll see you in the next video.